See, it's great. I'm in a country yes. that knows what corpsing means. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been a dinner press in America. You know, you talk about it, people go, I, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> um, if you take the 26 years of making lead roles in feature films prior to The Nice Guys, the amount of times that I would have corpsed on camera in that whole time, 49 feature films or whatever, would be less than any given week of shooting nice guys. <laughs> this little bastard makes me laugh. <laughs> and he's just, I, sometimes I would suspect, like he was up all night trying to think of a way to make me laugh in a sick, you know, because he just, he has this sort of natural comedic gift, you know, and uh, he's a funny bastard, man. So yeah, I laugh my head off all the time. <clears throat> There's a sort of joke that we've been making about Angari being the most mature person on set. And it's kind of a joke, but it's kind of real too, you know. Um, she always was prepared. She came ready to, you know, give everything she had. She's, you know, very limited experience, but uh, a, a fine intellect and, and a real enthusiasm for the, the, the craft. So it, it was great. The thing is, to get her to that place of, of comfort, you know, apart from the work that, that Shane did with her. You know, Ryan put a lot of effort into that, you know, and uh, just a few days ago we were just having a chat and I, I said to him, I, I just knew you were going to be a great dad when I saw you do that because he took yeah. time and he was gentle with her and he was like, you know, and open and then she just started to, to flower because she felt comfortable and, and, and she could own the space, you know, so it was, it was really cool. All I can say, um, because I've got a bit of canoodling to do on that issue, um, is I love this idea of a sort of a landlocked, or in this case, a, a time-locked franchise, which means it'll never catch up to us. So the sequel would be something in the 80s that was reflective of a, an issue or something in that era that we could throw these guys against, you know, up against that wall and see what sticks. Um, I just think that's a fun idea to do a sort of timeless private eye story that proceeds through a series of historical uh, incidents. But no matter how many you make, you'll never quite get up to the present day. <laughs> well, I, I was going to comment on that when you asked about Anne Gowrie because she is such a consummate professional that, you know, it was the first thing I filmed. And I had to, like you said, throw a young girl through a play glass, glass window. And I immediately felt the need to ingratiate myself to these two young girls and let them know I was a parent and that I was on the level and that we were just playing pretend. And they just both stared at me very blankly, like, yeah, so? Like, so that's like, right like we don't know window. this. Throw me through the window. What you got? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it? I want another take. I know you got more than that. So they, they, they took me to school. Ron has a, has a uh, way of putting it. He said, I thought my character was called Schmuck, because that's what I heard most on the set. Because <laughs> every time we'd finish a take, I'd look over to the monitors and Joel would be watching and going, what a schmuck. <laughs>